Welcome to the Vector 3 three-dimensional printer. I'm Francis Pearson from Eagle Moss Publications and I'm going to help you get the most out of your new printer. We'll go through the entire process from unpacking, assembling and calibrating the machine to downloading and using the software and of course printing. Because your printer contains precision moving parts, it was carefully prepared to prevent damage occurring in transit and it requires a small amount of final assembly by you. For this, you will need tools. Tools supplied with the printer include two Allen keys, a calibration gauge and a scraper. Tools you will need to supply yourself include a medium small Phillips screwdriver, a flat head screwdriver, a good pair of scissors and a craft knife. But first, let's unpack the printer. Pick a spot where you can use your printer, such as a desk or bench top. The V3 has a compact footprint, but it needs a flat surface and you'll want space nearby for a PC or laptop, plus room for your projects. Remove the top tray from the box and set it aside. We'll be going through the parts list shortly. One of the things you will find in the tray is the quick start guide. This contains everything you need to get you started, so keep it handy. Carefully take out the printer. Ease your fingers under the base. Don't lift the machine by the top or sides of the hood or by the red hood tabs. The printer needs to be stable during operation. If it rocks at all, gently tilt it and adjust the height of the feet until it is completely stable. Peel the protective film from the hood frame window. Let's go back to the tray. This contains most of the parts and accessories. Before assembly, check that you have all the items shown here. Power supply, USB cable, two rolls of PLA filament, filament spool, which comes in three parts, plus screws, a roll of masking tape, also to recap on the tools, the two Allen keys, calibration gauge and scraper tool. The build plate and print head items are packaged within the cardboard box taped to the printer gantry and we'll be checking those off shortly. You'll also find the quick start guide to setting up and using your printer. A full length manual is also available for download from our website. We've unpacked the printer and checked the contents. Now let's complete the assembly. Assembly is much easier with the hood temporarily removed. First, take the red tabs and lift until the hood locks on the catches. To release these, hold the hood up while easing the catches sideways, then lift it clean off and set it aside. Remove the cardboard box from the gantry. Check that the box contains all of its parts. These are the print head plus two bolts, print head guard plus one screw, base plus four countersunk bolts and build plate. The bolts and screws are supplied in a separate bag. 
For added protection against damage during shipping, the main moving parts are locked into place with a bracket, which we're now going to remove. First, peel the adhesive tape off the base mounting unit. Now take out the five screws from the shipping bracket and remove it. You may want to keep the bracket and screws somewhere handy in case you need to transport the printer. Cut the cable ties from the multicoloured print head cable. Take care not to snip through the cable itself. The plastic lug can also be removed from the gantry if you choose, but be sure to replace the screw and tighten it fully. Bolt the print head to its supporting plate. To ensure it is correctly seated and aligned, engage the small lug on the head within the notch in the plate. The two bolts take the large Allen key. Don't over tighten the bolts, just nip them up. Plug the multicoloured print head cable into the socket on the print head. It can be inserted only one way round. Ensure the plug is fully seated in its socket. Offer the print guard up to the print head, ensuring the tubular sockets inside it engage with the two posts projecting from the print head. As you do this, make sure the cable wraps around to the left and is kept clear of the two posts. The print guard is secured on top with a single Phillips screw. Access to the screw hole is via the slot in the top of the printer. Take care not to over tighten it. When you unpack the build plate, you will find it attached to the build plate base. You'll need to unclip it in order to attach the base plate to the printer. Now attach the build plate base to the build support using the four countersunk bolts applied. Make sure you get the plate the right way round. The clip goes to the front of the printer. Ensure the, ensure the bolts are driven fully home and don't stick out at all. You'll get the best results if you cover the build plate with masking tape. We've supplied a roll to get you started. Run lengths of tape over the plate, leaving enough to fold a little underneath at the ends. Don't overlap them, you want a nice smooth print surface. Fit the build plate to the build plate base. Lock in the two corner recesses at the back and then the centre recess at the front clip. Make sure it's securely bedded down and clipped into place. Reattach the hood. Guide the sides carefully into place so that they engage smoothly with the rails. Note also that the hood goes on only one way round with the side rails closer to the back of the printer than the front. This completes the assembly. The next step is to download the software and connect the printer to a computer. Visit www.3dprinter-collection.com to download the 3D Create and Print software. Make sure that your PC or Mac meets the minimum specification requirements. To download and install for Windows, double-click the Windows version, then choose where to save the program and whether to create a desktop shortcut. Once selected, the program will download.
To download and install for Mac, double click the download link. Double click the installer. Drag the 3D print app into the applications folder. You're now ready to connect the printer to your computer. When you do so, you'll need to identify a USB port for the printer's use. Here's how. First, connect your computer to the printer using the USB cable supplied. Ensure you have an internet connection. Connect the printer's power cable and turn on the red initialise switch. Give the printer a minute or so to warm up. Launch the 3D Create and Print software. A screen will appear showing the object control field, which is in effect a virtual representation of the printer's build area. Go to the config menu and select printer settings. If the port is showing in the drop down connection menu, then the printer is already connected. If the port is not showing, click refresh ports and it will appear. Click apply and then OK. From time to time, you may need to test the connection to the printer. Go to the config menu, select manual printer control and click connect. You will now be prompted to calibrate your printer before attempting to print for the first time. Now some information on the hood. The hood is integral to the functioning of the printer. The printer nozzle and bill plate must be heated to high temperatures in order to operate effectively and the hood prevents the user from touching hot moving parts. Likewise, the hood keeps out fingers and other objects that might damage the printer during operation. Finally, the hood helps keep out drafts and maintains a stable operating temperature inside the build chamber, ensuring that the filament layers stick properly to one another. The hood must be fully lowered before the 3D Create and Print software on your computer can connect to the printer. In fact, a built-in safety switch here in the base of the gantry ensures the printer will function only when the hood is fully down. However, in order to calibrate the printer before it can be used for the first time, you will need to connect to the printer and adjust the build plate height with the hood raised. The printer software therefore contains a special override function that disables the hood safety switch so that it can continue to operate with the hood raised. I will now explain how to disable the hood switch. First, check the hood is fully down. Then go to config, select printer settings and check the box marked disable hood switch. Now, raise the hood. The next step is to calibrate the build plate, which must be done before the printer is used for the first time. Calibration is essential. It ensures the build plate is always in exactly the right place in relation to the print head. You will need the calibration gauge. The calibration setup window appears when you first try to connect the software to the printer. The five points O, A, B, C and D correspond to the areas on the build plate where you will be checking the gap between the plate and the print nozzle. Click on each point in turn to move the plate so that you're familiar with the way it works.
Your goal now is to gradually raise the plate until there is a gap of just 0.2 millimeters between the plate and the nozzle tip. That's equivalent to the thickness of this calibration gauge and it has to be consistent at every point on the plate. If the plate isn't totally level, you are now going to adjust it using the software and the tools we provided. Click on the up arrow to raise the build plate. For 10 millimeters of vertical travel, click the arrowhead. For one millimeter of travel, click the center part of the arrow. For 0.1 millimeter travel, click the arrow base. Raise the plate by a total of 110 to 115 millimetres, taking it to 10 to 15 millimetres below the nozzle. That's the process for a PC. It's slightly different if you have a Mac, and you'll find the instructions in the manual. Now click through the five squares and watch the plate as it tracks beneath the nozzle. If it looks level, raise it to within about two millimetres of the nozzle. Does it still look level when you track it under the nozzle? If so, you can raise the plate another millimetre and check again. If not, it's time to level the plate. With the small Allen key, loosen the three grub screws in the plate support base. Do not remove them fully as they are very small and easy to lose. This will allow you to adjust the vertical bolts that control the tilt of the plate. Using a screwdriver or your fingers, turn the vertical adjustment bolts until you achieve a consistent gap between plate and nozzle at all five squares. This may take a while. You should make only small adjustments to each bolt, about a quarter turn at a time, as the adjustment mechanism is sensitive. Bring the plate up to less than one millimetre below the nozzle. Continue to adjust the elevation 0.1 millimetres at a time until the calibration gauge just slides into the gap. Retighten the grub screws and check again with the gauge. If all is level, click Set Height. Your machine is now calibrated. You shouldn't have to do this whole process again. However, if you move the printer around a lot, it will pay to recheck the calibration again before the next time you print. Normally this won't be any more complicated than resetting the height. You can now lower the hood. Now it's time to load a spool of filament. You can print with either ABS, which is recyclable, or PLA, which is biodegradable. We've included two spools of PLA with your purchase, and there are plenty of other colors available from a wide range of suppliers. Twist lock the spool center onto one spool side. Fix with three screws. Remove one filament roll from its plastic wrapper and lay it over the spool center but don't snip the cable tie yet or the filament may be difficult to manage. First, lock and screw the second slide into place. Now you can cut the cable tie from the filament roll. With the hood locked into the raised position, ease the spool onto the support arm. It doesn't matter which way round you hang it on, the free end can rise to left or right. Check the filament is looped freely on the spool and not tangled. Feed the free end up through the sliding guide in the lid. Adjust the guide if you need to. Attach the guide tube to the guide and feed filament into it until about 5 cm protrudes from the other end. Using scissors, snip the end of the filament off at an angle. This will sharpen the tip and help the drive gear engage it. Feed the filament into the hole in the top of the print head, pushing it in until you feel resistance. Now, lower the hood. Go into Config, Printer Settings, 
to uncheck the box marked Disable Hood Switch. Before printing for the first time, your print head must be primed with filament. Once you've done this, you won't need to do it again until you swap filament spools. Select Manual Printer Control and click the Heat On button. If you don't turn on the heat, the printer will not extrude. Once the nozzle has heated to its working temperature, click the Extrude button. A length of filament will ooze from the nozzle. You can just pull this off. If no filament emerges, you may need to click extrude once or twice until it comes through. If, after several attempts, the nozzle still does not extrude filament, you may need to temporarily unplug the guide tube and apply a little pressure on the filament from above until it engages with the drive gear. Your 3D Create and Print software is designed to be as easy and intuitive to use as possible. It allows you to take any STL file and print the object. STL stands for Standard Tessellation Language, and it is a standard format for 3D files. You can either create STL files yourself or download files that other people have created from the internet. Here's how to load files to print. Click Load and then select your STL file from its location. Alternatively, use one of the two sample files by selecting the file menu, highlighting examples and picking one of the two options. A virtual image of your file on the build plate will now drop down into the object control field. To add further files to a single print session, simply load them one after the other. The software will automatically place them in an appropriate spot on the virtual build plate. You can view your object from any angle and zoom in on it using the buttons down the left hand side of the object control field. Using these buttons simply changes your view. It doesn't alter how the object prints. You can rescale the object or alter the location or orientation in which it prints by using the buttons down the right hand side of the object control field. If a virtual object turns from red to grey, this means it cannot be printed. This will happen if it is too large or is moved off the build plate. To remedy this, reverse your last action until it returns to red. Select Rotate, then click and grab the object control field and move it in any direction, from side to side or up and down. Select Zoom, then click and drag the object field. Alternatively, zoom in and out at any time using the scroll button on the mouse. To restore your view to its original setting, click Reset. For a different viewpoint, double-click Reset to bring up an Options panel offering other views. To move an object to a different location on the build plate, select Move, then drag it. To move an object more precisely, double-click Move to bring up a Vector panel, then enter your chosen X and Y coordinates. To resize an object by eye, select Scale, then drag the object down to make it larger or up to make it smaller. To resize precisely, double click Scale to bring up a Scale Factor panel, then enter your chosen scaling values. To turn an object on its vertical axis so it prints facing another direction, select Turn, then drag the object. For more axis options, double-click Turn to bring up the control panel. To remove an object from the control field, first make sure it is highlighted, in other words that it is red, not grey, then click on Remove. We're nearly ready to print, but not quite. 
First, the STL file must be sliced into layers. Each slice corresponds to a thin cross-section of the object in your file. During printing, these cross-sections build up, layer by layer, to create your three-dimensional object. The software does the slicing for you with a single click, but it also gives you some customising options. Click the red slice button to bring up the slicing settings. Select the filament settings tab. The drop down menu allows you to select between fine, fast, normal and custom settings. Fine gives a higher quality print but will take longer to print. Fast gives the quickest print time but the lowest print resolution. Normal is a mid-range option and custom enables you to create and save your own tailor-made settings. Some STL files will print more effectively with the aid of support structures, vertical props of PLA or ABS that extend between the object and the build plate. Printing with supports is required when shapes have overhanging areas that might otherwise droop or collapse. After printing, you simply snip the supports off with a pair of side cutters. Support structures are added during the slicing process. To add them, select the Print Settings tab and tick the box labelled Generate Support Material. Now you simply click Slice. Once you've clicked Slice, you cannot make any further changes to the print specifications, but you can go backwards if you want to. OK, time for a recap. We've unpacked our printer, we've assembled it, we've installed the software, we've loaded and extruded the filament, and we've sliced our file. Now, we're ready to print. Once your file is sliced, click Print. The software now offers you the options of printing online or offline. If you choose the offline option, you can unplug your computer from the printer once the print command has fully spooled to the printer, which may take some time. Or, if you're happy simply to leave the computer where it is during the print operation, select Online. Printing will begin once the plate and nozzle have reached operating temperature. This shouldn't take long if you've just extruded filament, as the printer should be nice and hot already. The estimated print time is shown in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. At the start of the print, the plate rises to meet the nozzle, which first lays down a skirt of plastic before beginning on the object itself. It's a good idea to watch the printer deposit the first few layers to give you peace of mind that the foundations are secure. Once you've done that, you can sit back and watch or wander off and do something completely different. It's a good idea to periodically check the print is going okay and that the filament is feeding freely off the spool. If you ever need to pause the print, just press the front button. Once printing is finished, allow a minute or so for cooling down then use the scraper tool to ease the object and any other material from the build plate. Give the printer a couple of minutes to cool down before switching off at the back. Once you've printed your first object on your Vector 3, the sky's the limit. There are literally no end of files available online for you to try. And don't forget to visit our website, www.3dprinter-collection.com for your free set of 25 exclusive designs, the codes for which are found in the Quick Start Guide. If you have any queries or problems, check out the full manual, which is also available at our website. Thanks for watching and happy printing.